This video is brought to you by CopBlock.org. Uh, it was May 14th, 2009. Uh, me and my colleagues were driving to Meridian to uh, eat lunch with some other friends. We were in the midst of uh, filming what we called a near real time documentary. A mile from the county line, we got pulled over by uh, James Atkins of the Jones County Sheriff's Department. He said he initiated the traffic stop because he was unfamiliar with the paper license plate tag, a temp tag that I had on the RV because it was recently purchased. Uh, per the laws I understand it, he should have just ran the tag, saw him clear and let us go. But instead, uh, it seemed like a fishing expedition. Uh, I exited the vehicle uh, with a video camera uh, to which we had a short discussion about. Uh, he then abandoned the issue and instructed me to stand at the uh, rear of his vehicle. He's charged with disorderly conduct for filming a police officer. Um, in court today, and um, they're, they're trying to say that he, he just he disobeyed their orders, uh, which is uh, fictitious. I was just standing there waiting to have our license plates checked and be on their way, but when the other officer, Abraham McKenzie, arrived, he said, get the camera out of my face, which I took it out from pointing his direction, but I was never close enough to him to be in his face, and uh, he told me to turn it off. I said no, and then he uh, attacked me and said, then you're going to jail. Why not just drop it? Why, why, why show up for court? Why not just pay the fine and let it go? Well, I've already paid the fine, actually. Uh, the, I'm allegedly innocent until guilty, but the state has already taken my money, uh, put me in a cage, taken my fingerprints, my photograph, and uh, strip search me. So I'm in the means of uh, damage control. I'd like my money back. I'd like my name cleared of this charge. And I would like the officers to be held accountable for their actions. Um, a lot of them broke the laws on the side of the road that day and not us. Patrolling the interstate northbound, um, I noticed the RV. I went up to the RV, um, approached the RV, and asked Mr. Murdoch to step out. Um, at that time, he came out with a camera. What other unusual things were going on at the side road other than them locking the doors? Well, not only them locking the doors, the, the, the camera. The camera is, is what caught my attention. I, I can tell what it was, or, you know, it's something I never see on the side of the traffic stop as well. What did my family have to do with the traffic stop? It was just a distraction. Um, I didn't know if it was a weapon or any kind of deadly device. Did at any time during the traffic stop or our conversations, did you uh, ever ask me if my camera was a weapon or in fact that it was a camera? No, I am asked Mr. Murray if he would just stand at the rear of my patrol unit, uh, which he did do with the camera in his hand. Uh, by the time that I was standing at the door to waiting on the driver to get his information, Mr. Miller walked forward with the video camera. Um, I asked him to step back and he said he wanted to get audio. And I asked if he would just step back to the back of the patrol unit. Can you clarify uh, what this document is for the court? Sure, it was a, um, it was a red for disorderly conduct, failed to comply by not putting the camera down, which was remanded. Uh, but when did you fill out this form? The 14th of May. The day I was arrested? Yes. Thank you. Uh, yet later, you filled out an affidavit claiming uh, for refusing to put up the video camera. Yes, which was remanded. Which you then amended at a later date. Why the back and forth? I uh, don't understand your question, what you're saying. Uh, if I was, if on scene I was clearly a um, failure to comply with orders, uh, and that's what I was arrested for, then why write down putting on a video camera uh, several hours later? After further relaxing and putting everything into place, I went back to Justice Court and I remanded that charge. And it's still disorderly conduct, but I remanded the charge from putting the camera down to fail to stay back at the back of my vehicle. On my arrival on scene, I got out and I noticed a very unusual, something I never experienced before in my law enforcement career. Uh, had a young man standing with uh, their backs in the front of his vehicle, and there was a man that had a uh, camera in his hand, uh, which appeared to be videotaping. So I got in my vehicle and through our training, knowing the how the situation can turn dangerous, that could actually be a any type of distract, distractionary device. I went over and uh, actually told him to put the camera down. During that encounter, did you say, turn the camera off? And then there was a reply of no, and to which you replied, then you're going to jail? Yes. You did reply that? Yes. What did you mean by that? Exactly what I said. I mean, that we're going to go to jail? The person was going to go to jail. So you made that statement after Officer Atkins 
inform you of the laws that were broken <coughs> prior to your arrival. Yes. At what point did you relay the message to Officer McKenzie in what means to have him, to instruct him to arrest me upon the arrival? It was the point when Deputy McKenzie was, I believe, walking up to you at the same time I was approached to both of you guys when he was walking up to you. Did you know why Officer McKenzie was placing me in handcuffs? I guess because you failed to put the camera down. By your knowledge, I hadn't broken any law. No, so. So why would you place me in handcuffs and take my camera? For safety purposes, for my fellow officer, myself, and anybody else that's on the scene. So your intention when arriving on scene was to place everybody in handcuffs? No, sir, to get the situation secure before it escalated to become a problem. What did you tell me to turn off? Do you recall you told me to turn off? The camera. Is that a lawful request? Yes. It is a lawful request to Yes, if I, I feel like um, my fellow deputy or myself or anybody else is in danger, it just sure is. Why, why did you feel you were in danger? Because there's many things that could be a distractionary advice just to get his attention on you for something to happen to him. Do you have any evidence of there being a violent situation before you arrive on scene, yes or no, please? No. Um, upon realizing that the footage was no longer on, our, uh, on Christina, the camera, um, we immediately had put that out uh, through some friends that follow our website, to which one uh, commented that if we don't use the camera, there is a recovery software um, that it can be recovered by. We then drove three hours or so to uh, Memphis, Tennessee, where uh, our friend um, William Pearson um, spent a couple hours uh, retrieving the footage. Clear evidence that I was arrested for filming. Um, you didn't see Officer Atkins uh, timing it at the same time with McKenzie to team up and talk about arresting me for disorderly conduct or moving. Uh, Abraham, Officer McKenzie, was on a, a path, from what I feel in the video, um, to engage uh, Officer Atkins, at which time he told me to get that out of my face, which I turned it, and he said, shut it off, and then at that time he directed his attention towards me, and uh, if you see on the video, he made a V-line for me at that point, which to me um, shows that he had no prior recollection of what was going on in the scene. He didn't uh, get instructions from Officer Atkins to arrest me or about being disorderly uh, or, or any other violation. He merely didn't like my answer of no. At that same time, if we link those together and watch them side by side with the dashboard camera we watched earlier, you'll hear at the same time I'm arrested, um, Officer Atkins is on the phone with somebody. So he, has no, he doesn't have the ability to instruct somebody else about laws I violated and to arrest me. Um, and like I had shown when uh, Officer McKenzie was on the stand, he couldn't pause the moment even on the dashboard cam that stated uh, when he received those instructions and when he decided to cuff me and Atkins decided to arrest me. Um, to me, it's clear as day, I was arrested for an act that is perfectly legal in this state. And with that, I have no further questions from myself. We just finished my trial for disorderly conduct. Okay. Uh, it turns out we had a hung jury, uh, four not guilties, two guilties, and uh, now the burden is on the DA to decide if and when he wants to charge me or retry me. Um, he didn't state that there's a statute of limitations or how long it would take or when he would make this decision. Hopefully uh, I can finally get some closure at some point. You know, we're, we're, we're on 19 months here and no accountability, so thanks.